بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين إنا أنزلناه قرآنا عربيا لعلكم تعقلون نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن لمن الغافلين إذ قال يوسف لأبيه يا أبت إني رأيت أحد عشر كوكبا والشمس والقمر رأيتهم لي ساجدين قال يا بني لا تقصص رؤياك على إخوتك فيكيدوا لك كيدا إن الشيطان للإنسان عدو مبين وكذلك يجتبيك ربك ويعلمك من تأويل الأحاديث ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب ويتم نعمته عليك وعلى آل يعقوب كما إبراهيم وإسحاق إن ربك عليم حكيم لقد كان في يوسف وإخوته آيات للسائلين إذ قالوا ليوسف وأخوه أحب إلى أبينا منا ونحن عصبة إن إن أبانا لفي ضلال مبين اقتلوا يوسف أو اطرحوه أرضا يخل لكم وجه أبيكم وتكونوا وتكونوا من بعده قوما صالحين قال قائل منهم لا تقتلوا يوسف وألقوه في غيابة الجب يلتقطه بعض السيارة إن كنتم فاعلين قالوا يا أبانا ما لك لا تأمنا على يوسف وإنا له لناصحون أرسله معنا غدا يرتع ويلعب وإنا له لحافظون قال إني ليحزنني أن تذهبوا به وأخاف أن يأكله الذئب وأنتم عنه غافلون قالوا لئن أكله الذئب ونحن عصبة إنا إذا لخاسرون فلما ذهبوا به وأجمعوا جعلوه في غيابة الجب وأوحينا إليه لتنبئنهم بأمرهم هذا وهم لا يشعرون وجاءوا أباهم شاء وتركنا يوسف عند متاعنا فأكله الذئب وما أنت بمؤمن لنا ولو كنا صادقين وجاءوا على قميصه بدم كذب قال بل سولت لكم أنفسكم أمرا فصبر جميل والله المستعان على ما تصفون وجاءت سيارة فأرسلوا واردهم فأدلى دلوة قال يا بشرى هذا غلام وأسروه بضاعة والله عليم بما يعملون وشروه بثمن 
بخس دراهم معدودة وكانوا فيه من الزاهدين وقال الذي اشتراه من مصر لامرأته أكرمي مثواه عسى ولدا وكذلك مكنا ليوسف في الأرض ولنعلمه من تأويل الأحاديث والله غالب على أمره ولكن أكثر الناس لا يعلمون أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا صلى الله عليه واله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله اما بعد brothers and sisters in islam we thank the almighty allah for giving us another opportunity to be here today we thank him for his mercies that he's bestowed upon us we bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except the almighty allah we also bear witness that the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger whosoever the almighty allah guides is really guided and whosoever goes astray has nobody to blame but themselves uh today is thursday which corresponds with the ninth day of Zul Hijjah 1441 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam which also corresponds with the 30th day of July 2020 today is the day of Arafah uh, a very auspicious day uh, in the history of Islam in the Muslim calendar uh, some thousand years ago on this very day more than a thousand years ago approximately 1400 and uh, and 30 years ago 31 years ago the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam stood on the mount of arafah and he received some you know revelation concerning this deen and that verse can be found in surah al-maidah where the almighty allah says al-yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Verily, today I have perfected your religion. I have made whole my mercies and bounties upon you and I have chosen for you Islam as a deen. So the religion was perfected. Imam Malik رضي الله عنه when he came in explaining this verse, he said مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ دِينًا يَوْمَئِذٍ فَلَنْ يَكُونَ دِينًا لِلْيَوْمِ He said anything that was not part of the religion on that day on Arafah when Almighty Allah says the religion has been perfected then it will never be a religion in his in Malik's time and Malik lived in the third year a third century Hijrah he was born in sorry in the second century Hijrah he was born in the first century he died in the second century he was born in 94 Hijrah and then he died around 179 Hijrah so that's just a prelude to the importance of you this day but as our topic you know describes uh today normally we're supposed to have you know our muslim philosophy class uh there's this trending issue that i believe is also you know has to do with philosophy this beauty pageant muslim liberation you know and Empowering the Muslim woman is also part of philosophy. It's philosophical. You know, people feel that uh, the Muslim woman is not liberated. The Muslim woman is still enslaved. The Muslim woman is under lock and key. So they want to find ways and means to liberate her. And this has been something that has been going on for ages. at the turn of the 20th century to the 21st century now and it is always on the muslim woman 
it is not on any other Muslim, any other woman it's always on the muslim woman that she needs to be liberated she needs to be empowered she needs to be you know guided uh, what every other woman can do she can also do so our uh, young muslim ladies are buying into this trash who told you muslim women are not liberated and who said muslim women are not empowered so in running around or behind this vague and then misty and smoky liberation and empowerment, we tend to import all kinds of trash into our communities in the name of empowerment and in the name of liberation. And that has been a problem that we are facing. It's all philosophical. When... It's always the Muslim woman. It's always the Muslim woman. She needs to be liberated. She needs to be empowered. She needs to be empowered. She needs to be liberated. She needs to be empowered. And then young Muslim ladies are buying into this ideological warfare that makes them feel it makes them feel inferior. It makes them feel that they don't have anything valuable. It makes them feel that they are, you know, low class citizens. And that Islam has put them under the cloak of slavery and subordination. So they need to, you know, get out of that cloak and then, you know, realize their dreams. So if another culture, you know, prescribes a standard of liberation or empowerment, you find out that some of our sisters are running to that because those cultures or those people diagnosed them and said they are slaves they are subordinates so after pushing that you know virus in their minds they created the vaccine or the antivirus for it so because these young muslim ladies have been fed with this kind of virus they feel that they need to go back to the manufacturers of those virus to get the solution to whatever ailments they're feeling. But because they are Muslims, they love Islam, they feel that some of these solutions that are given, being given by these people, they need to, you know, give it some Islamic touch. You know, give it some Islamic touch. You paint it and then make it look Islamically, Islamic. But they don't know that they are shooting themselves in the foot. It isn't all the time that Islam prescribes an alternative for something which is haram. Not everything haram has an alternate. Sometimes the alternate is stay away. Stay in your lane and do what your religion teaches you. There are some things that you don't need any polishing to try to fit it into Islam or, or make it look Islamic. It doesn't work. That is why there is this saying, a dressed donkey is still an ass. You can change it. No matter how you, know, you wash the dog, it will still you know, you know, wriggle on the floor. No matter how much you wash the pig, the pig will still get dirty. No matter how beautiful Nkatiya Boga looks like, it is still granot. And these are the realities that I believe our young sisters must understand and then face. And there's another thing which has to do with, you know, talents. This is my talent. This is my talent. This is my God-given talent. You are suppressing my talent. You might have, I don't know if you call it talent or whatever, but if that gift, that gift leads you to do something that is in contrary with the Quran and the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, then it is detrimental to you. You throw it away. People have passions. The Almighty Allah created us with passions and then he gave us rules and regulations to govern those passions. He knew us. 
to test us. He gave us these passions. The human soul wants to do some things. But the Almighty Allah put in place rules and regulations to govern and guide the human soul and the body. So for the fact that you are good in something doesn't necessarily make that thing halal and then you are going to you know attribute it to the almighty allah that he gave it to you so why so our, our, our sisters must understand you know this basic principle of islam that not everything you see outside is good it's not always that you see greener pastures outside that you must jump to the yastic for measurement should always be islam so if you have a passion of empowering muslim women do it according to the dictates of islam do it within the framework of Islam. Don't bring in something that is alien to Islam and say you want to help Muslims with it. It's like giving Muslims alcohol to perform wudu with it. Because ablution is performed with liquid, you bring alcohol and give it to Muslims and say, since you use liquid, and this is liquid, you can use it to perform your pollution. You are not helping them. The last video I had on this issue of, you know, Miss Muslim Ghana, and I raised some points. And before that, uh, Khalifa, uh, the brother who is, you know, Facebook blogger, you know, he contacted me concerning, you know, uh, something, a video that he's seen uh, some Muslim ladies want to do, you know, a Muslim beauty pageant. And then uh, he's having an interaction with the organizers. So he wanted me to be on set and then listen to them and then pick some points and see how best we can help them. So that's where the whole, you know, uh, business started from so on set we spoke with the organizer Hawao Khalid and uh, we raised some points and I think I still have my points around somewhere here we raised some points and she agreed with us and uh, the agreement was that she would get back to us or she get back to any scholar no problem it is not necessary that she gets back to us if she goes to scholars. We are students. We, we don't say we are scholars. We are students. If she gets to, you know, to meet scholars who, you know, give her the right, you know, antidote or the right direction to what she's doing and then the thing is done well, alhamdulillah. So that was the agreement. But five days later, I saw the flyer for the media launch for the program. And I was taken aback that what happened? Was she able to, you know, you know, correct all the things that we said within five days? And that has even, you know, made them to, you know, maybe do a media launch. So I followed the link, you know, to the media launch. And I followed, you know, especially on Instagram. And I'll be showing you screenshots from the Instagram page i'll show you the screenshots and then oh that necess necessitated my first video where yes i sent them to the cleaners and i still stand on my position that it is haram it is wrong it is satanic it is deceptive it is fitna i still stand on it when i had that interaction with her on khalifa's platform i gave them 20 percent now i'm giving them five percent Because of recent events. So after my first video, uh, the sister, you know, 
commented on my videos on my video she had some comments to make on the videos and i didn't respond to those comments on the video uh, because it was after the program and i was busy doing some things so i just you know read the comments and i decided to you know respond to them in a video for the benefit of everybody so she said salam alaikum sheikh my name is hawao and and the lady you had the interaction with so yes i realized that and before that i went to her facebook page and i saw who she was i'm only here to clear the uh, the forms have three pages kindly search them all and relook at the criteria please okay uh, i only had one page of the form and i had two things that were critical to me on the forms which were marital status and then the height and then the weight of the participants and it's i didn't understand why height and weight in some of her comments she responded to that and i'll read that and then we'll also respond to that the statement whether one is married or not is to know who we are making the follow-up from whether the person seek the husband's or parental consent and then point of correction it has nothing to do with the criteria okay the reason why they want to know the marital status of the person is that is the person married or not if the person is married then did she seek her husband's consent before applying if the person is not married did the person seek a parent's consent before uh, they applied so they want to do follow up they want to have parental consent they want to have you know marital consent they might have a reason yes but then it's not something that they can really really get because you know our communities and how people are the young ladies can fill the form and sign and give it to anybody to fill and then get any number there and on the set khalifa made that point clear to her then she said they are doing that to free themselves from any blame fine but if that is their intent no problem i don't have any issue on that making correction on meeting islamic bodies check kindly redo your research well please because we have submitted letters to most of these bodies including form work and even had their secretary join us on the launch others said we're still going to hear from them and up to date we have not heard from them yes i made that clearly to them how many muslim organizations did they you know meet and when we had that meeting with khalifa on his platform it was none it was zero so at the media launch when i saw it i was like whoa this is a red flag i've raised and then you didn't meet it but then after the media launch the pictures that came out i saw the secretary of form what hadia aisha she was there i know her she was there and i'll show you her pictures on instagram Yes, she was there. So they had with the form work, they had it, no problem. And we'll be contacting form work to see what is their view on such a program, especially since the secretary was there and then she saw the event, she saw what happened, what notes did she pick? She would have to report back to the National Amira and then we'll have to contact form work to let us have their clear view on that because. You know, Fomwa is a reputable national Muslim women's organization, if not the topmost. And then it has, you know, the futures and then the aspirations of young Muslim women at heart. I told you some time ago, some few months before I traveled, they sent me an invitation to come and discuss rights of Muslim women and children in Islam. It is not on my Instagram page, you know. I didn't post anything of them on, them on my Instagram page. But then we'll be going to their Instagram page to see. Don't worry, we'll do that. Don't worry. But mine, I'm not going to post anything like that on my Instagram page. No, 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 never. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. So Formwork invited me with some scholars. I'm a student to discuss, you know, the rights and then uh, the privileges of Muslim women and ch and children, and I dis I was given the topic, the right uh, early marriage, early and child marriage in Islam, and I spoke about it, and then we 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 had that you know meet in with you know the scholars and then the mothers from from work because they have something very very you know uh, important they want to know a document they want to present to government concerning muslim so form work is 
very very great uh, with issues of partners please our filters our flyers has been updated and we have close to four zongo tvs and platforms partnering us we have submitted letters to this media house including maraba fm we are we have still not heard from the from them no problem zongo tvs ah uh, well no problem but i was thinking if you can get metro tv imam abbas one of the biggest tv stations in the country and imam abbas's programs on uh, uh, on fridays are the most watched muslim programs in the country you can partner you can get that imam abbas can do that for you imam abbas can do that and there is also gaskia tv my brother Muhammad Sharafuddin is also there and these are you know Islamic fully wholesale wholesome you know Islamic programs that you can get but no problem you are you, you you you're doing that no problem we had discussion you suggested we see our scholars and that we have and and that we have and we are still doing the fact that we didn't call you chef doesn't mean we didn't call other ulamas no problem if you didn't call me it's not an issue and the reason why I took up upon myself to do these videos that I'm doing was that Khalifa involved me in the beginning. And even if he didn't involve me in the beginning, these kinds of things will be speaking against. I remember I did a video on hijab vis-a-vis -vis beauty pageant when that Zainab issue came up. I did a video. You can go to my YouTube and just type using the same name, this same Facebook name I'm using. You can go to YouTube and type hijab vis-a-vis -vis beauty pageant we spoke extensively about hijab and then beauty pageants and how it comes comes into play so no problem the fact that you didn't call me is not an issue at all i am not i don't have monopoly of knowledge i'm not i'm not a sheikh and anybody who follows me knows that i say this thing in almost every video of mine i'm not a sheikh i'm a student and i'm still learning so don't worry if because you didn't send me you didn't call me uh, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean anything it doesn't take it doesn't it take anything away from what you're doing we contacted female scholars and we are still putting the things in place kindly make the research and see the people we contacted and some who we extended the invitation to the launch so what I'm saying is you contacted the scholars and they gave you a green light to do a beauty pageant, a Muslim beauty pageant. If these scholars gave you green light to do a beauty pageant in the name of Islam, they are doing Islam a disservice and you too. They didn't give you good counsel. They didn't give you good guidance. That is why I suggested to you that have a scholar as part of your team. On your website that I went to, you were only two. I don't know if you've upgraded it. Let me see if you've upgraded it. But on your website that I went to, you were only two people on the website. Let me see. Maybe you've upgraded it. You, Hawa Khalid, as the executive director, and one Kwame, Kwame Dankwa as whether the PR or something like that. Profile, who we are, our team. So, this is their website. And this is the team that they have so you can see Kwame Dankwa and you can see how Khalid Cruise House events this is it these are the only two people you have as your team on your website maybe you have more uh I can't you know make any statement on that but Kwame Dankwa is your director of marketing and PR and then you are the executive director of cruise uh of cruise you know, house events. So I don't know your team members and stuff like that. No problem. 
So you extended invitation to some scholars to come to the launch. I don't know how many came from the pictures. I didn't see any scholar. With media houses, kindly recheck again, please. We have submitted letters to media houses, including Marara FM, and we have still not heard from them. No problem. Let's all not misplace our priority. I don't know what you mean by that. May Allah guide and shape us all. I mean, because we are all fighting for the love of the deen. Yes. As you are praying, we are also praying. No problem. Pray. And let's not forget, we are all not perfect. We are all learning. And one person cannot know everything in the Quran. You made a very perfect statement and I like that. May Allah guide and shape us all. Because we are all fighting for the love of the deen. Yes. It's very, very important. And I told you, on screen i told you in your face that yes you 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 have the dean at heart but the problem is that your execution is haram loving the dean is another thing and then executing it the way it must be executed is another thing love for the dean alone doesn't suffice that is why you have people who have love for the dean but then they are extremists they have love for the deen. They end up killing people in the name of the deen. Boko Haram and the likes have love for the deen. But then their understanding, interpretation and implementation is what is causing chaos and confusion. And the Prophet Muhammad told us about the Khawarij. Where he said, if you meet the Khawarij, when he is praying... You will look down upon your prayer because the way he is praying with, you know, humility and, you know, tranquility is beyond imagination. So the fact that we love the dean is not a guarantee for us to open the, the, the doors of the dean for anything wholesale. Our love for the dean is not enough. We need to get it right. The fact that you love the dean doesn't mean that you can do everything in trying to help the dean. No, when you love the dean, you help the dean the way the dean wants itself to be helped. So when you love the dean, you do things according to the dean. And beauty pageants are not according to the dean. It is not a way of liberating and empowering Muslim women. It is not. And it can never be. We all know the end result of beauty pageants. Recently, the Miss Ghana dilemma that happened, the scandal, that the director was pushing these contestants to, you know, to men. I'm not saying that's what you're going to do. But then, this is what, you know, is always beauty pageants are wrapped with. In the end, the contestants turn into sex commodities. And that's what we are afraid. That is what we don't want for our sisters. That those prying eyes, the wolves in sheep's clothes of men, who will be prying these women and then make use of them and then throw them away. We don't want you to bring them on set, advertise them, and then these werewolves of men, these lions and tigers of men would devour our sisters. We don't want that. The fact that we didn't contact you does not mean we didn't contact other scholars. We've already did that, that Allah is the best judge. Really, he's the best judge. Let's not judge what we know not about. Yes, let, don't judge what you don't know about because you don't know much about Islam. Don't go there. Before you say anything, kindly have a thorough research, please. Thank you. I did my research. I know your website, you didn't give it to me. I made sure I found it. And I'll be giving you more information about what uh, uh, what we had. And the reason why I'm saying this, your program is haram. And this, your program has a tendency of further promoting promiscuity in our Muslim communities. At a time whereby we need to invest more in education and empower our sisters on education. We don't need anything entertainment. We don't need them to be revealing their souls. We don't need them to be exposing their bodies. We don't need them to be exposing their chest and their ears and their necks. We don't need them to be wearing tight-fitting clothing that will expose their breasts and then their buttocks. We don't want that. 
beauty pageants only portray the physical appearances of women. That is the main thing. Forget about telling me the intellectual, there's eloquence. It, it, it counts for little to nothing. What is paramount and prime is their faces. Let's not try to compare the other pageant platform with ours. Because it comes with a different concept. You see in beauty pageant. What is what different concept is yours from these beauty pageants after we saw the media launch? What is different? The media launch that you had, the kind of people who grace the occasion and the kind of dressing that they had. What makes it different from the other pageants? Is it because you put Muslim out there? Or is it because you are Muslims? It doesn't matter who heads haram. Whether it is a Muslim who is heading the haram or it is a non-Muslim who is heading the haram, it is haram. It doesn't matter even if it is the Imam of the Haram al makki who came, even if Sudais came to the program and then he opened prayer for you there, it is haram. I'm personally disappointed when you said you didn't see anything Islamic in the Lord. Yes, that's my opinion. And I'm going to prove to you why I said I didn't see anything Islamic there. You're only Muslims there, but then what you did there is not Islamic. And then you showed it to the world. You showed it, you put it on a public platform. That's what you did. You showed it to the world. And there is outrage out there because of this. It's not me who is saying it. It's not as if it is me who has, you know, had, you know, a mission to destroy you. No, no, not at all. Kindly watch the full beauty video unless you explain to us what you wanted to see when you say Islamic. <laughs> you see, sometimes you just have to check. I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm trying to get older in my dawah, older than my age in my dawah. So try to eschew some words, some comments. Yes. How will you know we listen or not? Are you basing your speech on the fact that we didn't call you so we didn't pay attention to the suggestions you made? That is on Islamic as well. I think you'll be the last person to say something is on islamic seriously you will be the last person to say that you should be the last person to say that and the fact that you didn't call me is not an issue i'm not bothered at all but the reason why i'm saying you didn't listen is that if you had spoken to the sheikhs it is one out of two things either you didn't speak to the sheikhs you went on further to do whatever you want to do or you spoke to the sheikhs and then they give you wrong fatwa. They told you it's nothing. A Muslim woman can expose her neck and her chest. A Muslim woman can wear skinny clothes, tight fitting clothes. A Muslim woman can put on you know, extended eyelashes. A Muslim woman can put on heavy makeup and go out of her home. Because that's what happened there. So I'm not saying it out of, you know, uh, ignorance. I know what I'm saying because I've seen it. I know what beauty pageants are and I know what you did over the hours in there. But you gave us the videos. You gave us the excerpts. And your video of even Bismillah Rahman Rahim is out in the name of Allah, the most merciful and the most. And then it was a warning shot from Allah to you. It was a warning shot from Allah to you. He doesn't want his name associated to something like that. So in mentioning his name, you have to fumble. In mentioning Allah's name, you have to fumble. Because the Almighty Allah doesn't want something like that to be associated to his name. So your Bismillah Rahman Rahim, the name of Allah, the most mentioned, and then you, you, you had problems saying it. It's not because you don't know. And it is not because it's a slip of tongue. 
it is a warning shot from the Almighty Allah to you that be very careful of where you want to associate his name. Ya ilahi. I'm going to show you some of the videos. You see the kind of dress you are wearing over there? You see the kind of dressing you are wearing over there? And you see the Almighty Allah said he gave you a warning shot. Concerning not associating his name to this thing. He doesn't want it. So he sent you a warning shot when you were mentioning his name in launching your program. It should bring you back to your senses that no, this thing is not Islamic. <sighs> yeah, either he. I have another video to show you. This is except from the media launch excepts from the media launch and uh, it's because you said it's islamic that's why we are speaking but if you said it's not islamic we don't have any issue with you if it is a sisters only program no problem but then you said it is a muslim program and this is what you have to show for uh, media launch. Let me see. I think I have some of the videos here on my phone too. Android phone. I don't know that that guy, the Rasta guy, I don't know where he's from. I don't know who he is. What is he doing there? What is he doing there? He's interviewing you. 
and then shaking his head, cracking jokes with other people's sisters and wives. If he is a Muslim, he should fear Allah. We don't do those things. If he is not a Muslim too, you must be careful involving non-Muslims in Islamic programs. I don't say you don't involve them in, we involve non-Muslims in our Islamic programs, but not in this capacity. We don't do that. You see why I say, I didn't see anything Islamic in your program? The makeup is very heavy. And if it is a sisters only program, this video must not come out only sisters. You dress in your hijab, you go out there. And then in the program, you can take off your hijab to reveal places that Islam allows you to reveal to even a fellow sister. Because in Islam, not even your sister should see everything on your body. So if you dress your full hijab, and then you go to a sister's only program, and then you take off your hijab, this video shouldn't come out. There are a lot of sisters who are having sisters only programs and then we don't see any of the videos. It is their business. Because that is what Islam says. The one tongue display of a Muslim woman's beauty is haram in Islam. And that's what you've subjected these Muslim women to and then they themselves are part of the prob problem because they went there themselves. And don't think because that sound bite is in Hausa, it is okay. No. Islam has its position when it comes to music. Know that. <clears throat> Islam has its position. Music is the food of the soul. Even when you are going to toilet, Islam has a rule on it. And you think Islam doesn't have a rule on music? Uh, let's go to the Instagram page. And then let's see what is there. So this is the Instagram page, Miss Muslim Agan. That's the Instagram page. And then... Uh, Some of the invited guests. This is Zara from Ghana's Most Beautiful. Ghana's Most Beautiful. Zara from Ghana's Most Beautiful. She has experience in beauty pageants because she went to she went to Ghana's Most Beautiful. So you contacted her to give you, you know, more vibes about beauty pageants. Um, this is some of your invited guests Samata Adams I don't know her this is one of your invited guests she is called Wu Nam, Black Muslim. And uh, if you go into her Instagram account, you know, Muslim fashionista. That's what we want to see. You don't do this in Islam. A Muslim woman doesn't display her beauty. She's a model. 
and we all know what models do. We all know what models do. So these are the ones who grace your occasion, your special mention of them. Salam. Part of your invited guests. There is this one too. Yakubu Shila. She's also a model. Is this hijab? You want to promote modesty with this? These are the people you invited. There are more, I can't show you. There are more, there are more, more of that, more. So that's why we're saying that you need to really understand what Islam is before you engage in anything. You need to do that. Someone will say, aren't these girls Muslims? Yes, they are Muslims for all you know. But then this wanton display of their beauty is not Islamic. We can't sugarcoat it. We can't, we can't, you know, clean it. We, we can't, we can't defend it. They are Muslims, yes. But then their display of their, their beauty is not something that Islam encourages. Islam hates. And this saying of, you know, it is their talent. It is not a talent. It is a test from the Almighty Allah. You don't do that. You don't dress like this in Islam to go for a public program. You don't do that. You don't dress like this in Islam on social media. You don't do that. A Muslim woman, you dress like this in your home, no problem. You dress like this in front of your husband, no problem. But then for you to come out dressed like this and even post it on social media, it's not acceptable. And these people cannot spearhead the empowerment of the Muslim woman that we need. They can't. Because we don't need the Muslim woman in modeling. We don't need the Muslim woman in, in all these kinds of things, in beauty pageant. We don't need them for that. We need the Muslim woman to aspire to greater heights. One of, I think the chairperson is one Hajia Kubura Diamonds. And I think she is one of the managers at Electoral. Yes, these are kinds of role models that the Muslim woman, young lady can look up to. Not models. And then take this out of your mind that there is halal modeling. It is not true. It's like saying there's halal alcohol or there's halal pig. Modeling in itself is haram. So when you say halal modeling, which part are you halal? And I've seen some Muslim ladies who have modeling homes and then they call it halal modeling. And then when you see them dressing, it, it shoots you in the heart. Skinny jeans. Sometimes the jeans have been cut, you know, the way they cut the jeans. And then they wear tight fitting shirts. They open their chest, you can see their chest, and then they bring some cordially, some, some summa, and then they tie their head, and then they say, this is hijab modeling or uh, halal modeling. Islam doesn't know that. 
Don't deceive yourself. Don't think that anything you see another culture or community do in the name of women liberation or women empowerment is the way to go. No. You need to have yours. And yours is what the Almighty Allah has given you. You don't need anybody's approval. You don't need anybody to tell you what to do when your Islam has given you what to really do. Sharif Jannah Focus writes on Facebook, Not everything haram has an alternative. Sometimes abstinence is also an alternative. May Allah forgive and guide us all. Not everything halal, uh, haram has an alternative. Not everything that is haram, that dole, 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 you must try to clean it and make it look nice. It doesn't happen that way. It won't work. Islam doesn't know it. You need to be self-independent. It's not compulsory that anything you see, eh, we must also have our own. 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 No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Zubail, the youth must change, also writes on Facebook. At the time when even the non-Muslims have realized that the beauty of a woman is in covering the body and concealing her beauty, is the same time our sisters want to be trading themselves in the name of beauty pageants. At a time when even non-Muslims realize that the beauty of a woman is in covering the body and concealing her body, that is the beauty of a woman. It's the same time you, our sisters, want us, want, you are parading yourselves naked on the streets and saying that is empowerment and liberation. Ari J. Ibrahim writes a wonderful thing. He says, our liberation starts when we realize that we do not need to prove to anybody that there is beauty in modesty. If you have to prove to somebody that there is beauty in modesty is either the person's heart is at cake or what you are practicing is not modesty. If you are really practicing modesty, there is no need for you to prove to anybody that the modesty and the chastity that you are in is beautiful. You don't need to. You don't need to. But if you feel you need to, then you are not liberated. You still have some shackles, some colonial, new colonial shackles on you. So, for us, our duty is to speak to you and tell you the things the way they are. No sugar coating, no makeups, no wanting to get any favors or likes. No, it's our duty. You have every right to do it. We can't stop you. We can't storm the place and beat you up. And no, we are not macho men. We live in a civilized country that, you know, has rules and regulations. But then, what we tell you is that the Almighty Allah doesn't like this thing. And this thing socially has a very negative impact on our communities. When we are fighting for the hijab, and then you bring in a program that is contrary to the hijab, and then you frame it like it is, you know, promoting hijab, then you don't understand what hijab is because your dressing as the major organizer, the CEO of the program, shows that you don't understand what hijab is. Because if the frog in front falls into the pitch, the rest follow suit. If you as the CEO of the organization, doesn't understand hijab, doesn't put on hijab, and then you want to promote hijab, then this is, I don't know what to call it, is a contradiction or what? Because you say, I am promoting hijab, but then you are naked. Because the dressing 
that you had that day Islamically you were naked because the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the end of time you will find women kasiyatun ariyatun ma'ilatun mumilat you will find Muslim women or women who are dressed but then they are naked you are dressed but then your dress has shaped your body your botox is shown your breasts are shown the shape is there it is shown your body is shown the cloth is tight fitting you have heavy makeup on your face your neck is showing this is not hijab and majority of the photos that i've seen are examples of that muslim women with longer eyelashes is haram it is not hijab muslim women in Take makeup, it is haram outside your home. Muslim women in tight fitting clothing, skimpy clothing, it is haram. You don't you don't dress like that and then say you're going to promote hijab. No. Your dressing is anti-hijab, it's anti-hijab. So when you come out and say I'm promoting hijab, and then you are dressed that way, you're only making fun of yourself. You're only making fun of yourself. So go back to the drawing board. I say this. Go back to the drawing board. We have two things. We have the advocacy that we are going to do against the program. And then we have Al-Kunut against the program. You won't do any Al-Kunut for you, to you. No, 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 not at all. We only wish you well. As I said, and I repeat again. You have good intention, you have the dean at heart, but then you don't know the dean. Yes, it's very, very clear you don't know the dean, that's one. Two, it's very, very clear the people surrounding you do not know the dean. Three, it's very, very clear the people you consulted maybe gave you the right information and you ignored it because you have an agenda or they gave you a wrong information. And these are the three things that I feel what is apparent i don't know what is in your heart i might be right i might be wrong but then these are the things that are apparent you don't know the dean you don't have people around you who know the dean and then the people you consulted either gave you the right fatwa that this is haram move away from it or they told you it is halal and you continue to do it at a time whereby we have other organizations in the Muslim community that are championing real empowerment of our Muslim sisters. You want to bring this filthy thing in our community. At a time whereby we have Zongo Inspiration Team, as I said last time, whether we have Success Book Club, we have a Shaman Readers Club, where we have uh, all these you know, Muslim organizations you know, uh, the, the, the Ramadan crown, Ramadan festival, we have the Ramadan shopping, we have all these groups in the community, all Islamic Ummah of Ghana, Al-Islah Center, uh, all these, you know, groups, Al-Kalam Institute, uh, Ummah Initiative. These are young people like you who have gone to school even more. Ummah Initiative was started by a sister, a medical officer, I remember. Umma Initiative was started by a medical officer who is a, a sister, not a man. A woman started Umma Initiative, a medical officer. And now look at what Umma Initiative is doing. They are going to have a program very soon about, I think, marriage seminar with Haj Zagun and then Haj Maliki as the resource persons. This is what we want, education. You don't need anyone to display of any woman's beauty. Islamic Umma of Ghana that I, I am as an ex the, the executive director. Our president is a woman. We were fortunate enough to invite Mufti Meng twice to Ghana, Dr. Salah once, Dawood Walid from US, Sheikh Ali Suleiman, and stuff like that, and then John Fontaine. Our president is a woman. She is the brains behind, it is a woman who is the brains behind bringing Mufti Meng to Ghana. It's a woman. Adjaso Haile. It's a woman who is the brains behind that. And in our team, we have women. Our secretary is a woman. And then they bring in the ideas and we the men who have to scratch our heads in trying to work, match them up. In the end, we agree that yes, their ideas are better than ours and then we follow suit. This is 
this is what is going on in the community. Sisters like you who have the dean at heart, who want to liberate and empower women, are bringing in educative programs. How to nurture the next generation. Education. Education is the key. But you say no. Beauty pageant. Where right? there's going to be cooking competition and then there's going to be little knowledge about Islam. And then the winner, she wins and then she has little knowledge about Islam. And then she's the role model for our young girls. No, we don't want that kind of model. That is Musiba. That kind of role model is Musiba. It's catastrophe. It's al karitha That's what the Arabs say. It's a catastrophe. It is a hurricane in the making. We don't need that. We need a Miss Muslima who knows her religion. She knows it. And then she's equally qualified when it comes to the secular activities. And then when she sits on the high table, all of us will say, yes, this is Miss Muslima. It's not about what she, the way she looks or her height or her weight. And then you mentioned that the height or the weight are, you know, to, to find you know, the right costume for them. Are you going to give them costume too? How is the costume going to be made? Which tailor needs the weight of a woman to, 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 to sew a dress? I don't know. This is the first time I'm hearing it. You need the height and the weight of the woman to determine the costume. Hey, Yanzu, tell us sooner to check your weight in it. Tell us they use scale. You stand on it and then they check your weight and then know, okay, you are 95 kilograms and this is the kind of dress we're going to give you. Hey, my sister, my sister, don't let me spark up. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. So, but then we are open for Georgia. We are open for Georgia. And let me tell you, we are having groups now being formed. Four groups called me. Four groups called me that they have formed concerned youth associations to fight this cancer. Yes, you should know that. The way you've organized yourself to create this cancer, people too are also organizing themselves to fight you. Not you fight you, but to fight the thing. Because we need you. You are part of the community. It's just that you, are, you want to bring something that the community you know, doesn't like. So we need to fight that thing. You are in Accra. And people from Takuradi called me concerning your program. People in Sunyani called me concerning your program. People in Tamale called because of this program of yours. Because they are dissatisfied. Because they've seen the way promiscuity is on the high in our Muslim communities. The need for hijab has never been more important in any time than this time of ours. And then you bring in Miss Muslima. To end with, Miss Muslima, I don't know where you get that from. If it is Hausa, Miss Muslima. That's what we the Zongo people say, but Muslim, I don't know how where you get that from. But you can change the Muslim and make it Miss Ghana, and we'll close our mouth. That's your business. But the moment you make it feel like it is Islamic, then we we'll have to put on the working gear and work for Islam and the Almighty Allah, work for Allah and then Islam. So my sister, go back to the drawing board. Go back to those sheikhs who you are refusing to mention their names and tell them that me, their student, says beauty pageant is haram. And from your media launch and the pictures and the videos that are coming out, it's very, very clear. The fact that you didn't drink alcohol there or didn't eat pig doesn't mean that it is not it's Islamical. Your dressing is part. And it is a major thing because you say you are going to promote hijab. But then the dressing of the people we saw in the pictures that are coming out in the videos, this, it defeats the purpose of hijab and defeats the purpose of what you say you are going to promote. So when I say it's un-Islamic, 
Uh, no, I'm not meaning you didn't you drink alcohol there or you ate pork or you did. No, 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 no. That's not it. And this even points to the fact that you still you lack Islamic knowledge. And as Zakir Naik says, or from Ahmed did that, the most dangerous Muslim is the ignorant Muslim. Who out of his ignorance gives Islam a bad name and feels he is rather helping Islam. We love you. We want to help you. But we love Allah more. We love Islam more. And if anything that is going to destroy Islam is being pushed in our faces, we will defend Islam. So for our Muslim philosophy class today, we're supposed to treat, you know, learning centers and then the translation movement. But it is because of some of these things that we started the Islamic philosophy class. Where we need to let our people understand that it's not everything haram that we must have alternative for. It's not everything that, you know, you see outside there that you must try to inculcate in your religion. No, it's not compulsory. We want to empower Islam. Empower Islam through education. The Prophet Muhammad ﷺ didn't come for any form of entertainment, even though entertainment is allowed in Islam. But then education takes precedence in everything in life. Whether you're a Muslim or not, education is key. And Islam, the Almighty Allah, in giving us this religion, made it very, very clear. Read. When you read, you be informed. And when you are informed, you advance and progress. But if you don't read and you feel you can make any change, you rather be shooting us in the foot. Hajj Ahmed is saying, why the organizers didn't organize anything called Miss Christian? Our uh, people are helping the Kufar to cause more harm to our deen. I can't but agree with him. He has, he has a point. So my sister, your sponsors, Accra City Hotel, that Khanam Khazam, and who else? Let me see. Uh, part of your sponsors. I can't see very well because it's very, very small down there. Your sponsors, Accra City Hotel. So, Novotel wants to tell us that they want to promote hijab. Novotel, Accra City Hotel. They want to tell us that they are going to promote hijab. Subhanaka Allah, Muhammadik, Nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nastakfirukun and tubu ilaik. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifu al-musalamun al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salamu alaykum.